Hello, in this video I'm going to explain torque on a current loop in uh, a uniform magnetic field. <clears throat> um, first I'm going to define some terms. Okay, if I have a loop here, the area inside here is A. <clears throat> and if you look at the loop, like pretend we put it on its side, the plane of that area, is the normal vector, is pointing outwards. Um, you'll learn that, like, this is more of a calculus, I don't know, three subject, but you need to understand it a little bit, and that's just the normal vector, which is basically if you, um, it's the area out of the loop. Um, I'm also going to teach you what I would call the second right-hand rule, which a lot of people use, um, just because it's so common. Okay, I'm going to try to draw this hand really poorly. These are fingers bent around with a thumb pointing up. Okay, so if we have this thumb pointing up and these fingers curled this way, this would be the current of the loop. This is the area vector of the loop. So for example, the current is going this way around the loop. The area vector is coming out at us, which is right there. And then the magnetic field, um, well, we'll get to that. Um, <clears throat> okay, so basically I'm going to toss out some equations. I made an example video of this um, before. I would highly recommend um, looking at that because that makes it a lot easier to understand because it's really hard to just explain it without um, having to do a problem. I'm going to attempt that right now. Um, beyond this, I'm going to explain the magnetic dipole moment, usually called the magnetic moment from what I've seen, and that's equal to the current times the area vector. Um, if you have a loop of wires, so let's say a little like coil like this all the way down, which obviously this is not uniform, so it'd be pretty terrible. Um, you have the number of loops times the current times the area, assuming that this is all the same area. Um, to get the torque, you set that equal to the dipole moment. Uh, magnetic dipole moment, the cross product of the magnetic field, or I A cross B, which if you end up understanding a little bit, the torque is equal to, I'm going to say the dipole moment times Okay, the angle between this, say there's a magnetic field going this way. I'm going to use green to represent magnetic field. So we have a magnetic field going this way, and the area vector is going up. The torque on that would be, the angle on that would be sine 90. So the maximum that um, the torque could be is when sine is 90, because that equals 1. So then you just take the magnetic moment and multiply it by the magnetic field, and that'll give you the torque. So essentially, how you get torque is you take the area vector, you wrap your fingers, to get the area vector, you wrap your fingers around that loop, which is the picture right here, in the direction of the current, and that'll give you the area vector. If the thumb's pointing, the thumb only has two ways to point, up or down, basically, when you're doing that. So if the current's going counterclockwise, the area vector will be pointing up. If it's going clockwise, the area vector will be pointing down for a loop like this. Or like that. Um, you then take the sine, take the magnetic field and multiply it by the sine theta, or the angle at which your um, the, the angle of difference between the area vector that you just 
used your hand to, and the magnetic field. Um, there's a couple other things you can use this for. It That's my quick explanation on torque. I would highly recommend looking at my example video because I'm not going to go through a problem right now, and you don't really use torque too much, in my opinion, but um, you can suit yourself on that one. Another thing I want to cover real quick is that the, the potential energy in that loop is equal to the negative dipole moment. Remember the dipole moment, uh, magnetic dipole moment is right here. Dot product be the um, magnetic field vector, um, which is these two which is the magnitude of these two sorry, times cosine theta or the angle between them and that will give you the potential energy inside that loop which sometimes can be very high. You end up using this later so I'm writing it down right now. Um, I hope this helps I will link my other video so you can get a, an example of this, which will probably help you understand. And uh, thank you for your time, and um, feel free to leave a comment, and I will respond and try to help you out. Thank you.